gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns in the kingdom of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's imagine the children come forward. 
They're not. But I can imagine if we did the children's sermon up today, I, I would have my mask on, and I would ask them, do you notice anything different? And they would say, you look much more handsome today, Pastor, much more handsome. And I can't guarantee you which child would say it, but I can take a good guess as to who their grandparents are. <laughs> Just saying. This is different, isn't this Easter different? I've seen some of your pictures on Facebook at various celebrations and birthday parties, and I'm just aware how much I miss seeing you and seeing your energy and look forward to the day when through this congregation you will gather again and you will be together and it will be a good day. And we will all say, thanks be to God. Let us stand for the gospel acclamation and the reading of the gospel.
Some would say it's a miracle. In God's time, others will say, no, it's about science. And is there a way that truth is truth? They are one and the same. Seek the truth. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek the truth, but do not think you can possess it. Receive the truth and share the truth, but don't think you can hoard it. I'm amazed at Matthew's gospel. You know, the gospel readings rotate on an every three-year basis with John's gospel being periodically an option and periodically used. Each gospel is a witness. It is a witness to Christ. It is a witness to who Jesus is and what the early church came to believe. But I'm amazed that Matthew's gospel is much more like Mark's. The Easter story is short and to the point and not a lot of extras. Now here is one part where Matthew's gospel is different. And if, if we did an Easter pageant and I was in charge, we would do the Easter pageant in four stories. And Matthew's gospel is the one that people got to Pilate or to Herod and said, you better put a guard up a tomb, no telling what those Christians might try, or no telling what this man's followers might try. They might try to steal the body. So Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. And I find that amusing that she's named, but it's the other Mary. It's not Mary, the mother of Jesus, because that would be noted. It's just this other Mary. Like, this is, I won't go down that path, but it's just interesting. And for them, as they arrive at the tomb, there's a major earthquake. I can imagine there's lightning, there's thunder, there's all kinds of activity. The angel is there, the stone is rolled away. It happens in front of them. It's like they see it, feel it, smell it, taste it. And the reading says, the guards became like dead men. For the angel, the angel just gives them the basic news. He's not here, he is risen. Go tell the disciples, see where his body was. He will meet them in Galilee. And I like the story as it tells they ran with fear and great joy. So much of life is a mixture of our anxiety and our hopes, our dreams and our fears. And so they leave and they know and they report and they tell that they were both afraid and had great joy. They meet Jesus, they worship him, they embrace Jesus, greets them. Jesus says almost the same thing as the angels, don't be afraid, go tell the brothers, I will meet them in Galilee. And in Matthew's Gospel, that's it for Easter Day. Galilee is, depending on what town or what precise place they were heading to, was somewhere between 60 and 80 miles. Jesus could get there immediately, but the disciples weren't going to get there for three or four days at the quickest. That's it for Easter Day, other than the guards. The guards immediately go to the authorities, the religious authorities, and say, this is what happened. Well, we can't have that. So they said, 
Tell him you fell asleep. We will just say you fell asleep. The disciples must have stolen the body. And we will protect you from anyone who causes you trouble. So a few days later is when the disciples see the risen Jesus, according to Matthew. Colossians is an interesting text for today. I find it to be a somewhat almost circular argument. It tells us don't focus on the things of earth. Focus on the things of heaven. Focus on the risen Christ who is seated next to God the Father. But when we focus on Christ, he calls us to focus on our neighbors, on the least, on the broken. There's almost a sense that it's a reminder we, we have a choice. Every single day we have a choice. We can either seek our own personal desires or we can seek the whole, the whole community, the whole earth, This is uh, Easter like none other. Part of our prayers will be to pray for leaders. And we need to pray for leaders. That right choices are made. That the focus is on the whole. Paul, who's the writer of Colossians, or is credited with writing Colossians, also wrote to Timothy, and in Timothy, the first book of Timothy, the sixth chapter, tenth verse, it talks about the love of all, of the love of money is the root of all evil. In Luke's gospel, in the twelfth chapter, the fifteenth verse, Jesus tells the people, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Like greed is never good. It's never helpful. What is the purpose of community? And you might also say, what's the purpose of commerce? What's the purpose of buying and selling and working and trading? Is it rooted in greed, the love of money, or is it rooted in deep concern for the whole, for community, for our neighbors, for the least? Never have we been given the opportunity to make daily decisions as to do we do what we want or do we do what has been determined to be for the best of the whole? Do we do what's in our own interest? Or do we sense that we ought to be doing what might be best for the whole? So the purpose of community is not for me to get ahead, but the purpose of commerce and community just might be that people are cared for, nurtured, loved. There's always going to be some with more and some with less, but if we are geared to say, how can all be given a chance? How can all have an opportunity to have the basics? How can all have the opportunity to know 
of the great love of the divine of the holy for all. One of the reasons I would say Colossians ultimately calls us to care for our neighbor is that in Matthew's Gospel, when Jesus meets up with the eleven at this point disciples, the one appearance that Jesus has with his disciples after the resurrection in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus tells them, go into all the world proclaiming the gospel, baptizing, making disciples, inviting all to be a part of the genuine community, the joyous community, the community that lives now and in ways that we can only imagine will live forever. He is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed.
Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of resurrection, from the very beginning, you give the church the gift of women as your witnesses, as preachers, teachers, and leaders. Open our ears to their proclamation this day and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. All your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We will weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. We pray also for others whom we lift up now, aloud or silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wise Father, we pray that you guide the whole creation as we the whole congregation as we prepare to vote on calling Pastor Marissa. Help us work out the details. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless the creative and helpful service of worship leaders this day. Musicians, ushers, greeters, worship assistants, preachers, readers, and all others who provide welcome and hospitality in our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. With full confidence in your love, Almighty God, we, we place for all whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with us always. And also, and also with you. Let us prepare for the offering of ourselves.
merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service to your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Again, continue people in, continue to encourage people as you are able to make gifts to this congregation and to ministry and to those who are in great need. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We you lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. It is indeed right to our duty and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who suffered and death gave salvation to all. You gathered your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our 
forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought Jesus from the dead raise us to new life, fill us with hope, and turn our morning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us all now and forever. Amen. Let us sing the higher cross. Thank you. 